On April 20th, 1952, the smoldering resentment of 6,500 convicts in the biggest jail in the United States broke loose. Number 711474. We got eight of your screws. Now maybe we'll kill them, maybe not. It all depends. Lions, you know what it means if anything. Anything happens to a prisoner, you got eight dead boys. Any move to rush us, you got eight dead. That's all for now, Warden. That's bulletin number one. Other bulletins to follow. The stories that shock a nation, move them, make them laugh, begin here, like this one. I'm Paul Stewart. Reporter Al Kaufman of the Detroit Times was pulled into this storm of bitterness and violence and stayed with it to the end. He lived through a human storm, the shock of which was felt throughout the whole country. In this story, I reenact the role Al Kaufman played in life. They're ready. They're rolling. The presses are rolling on deadline. Up. I'm gonna kill him, you hear me? <laughs> hey, Warden, are you listening? This is Johnson. I'm out of the hole, Warden. One of your boys is down there now. Listen, the judge gave him 99 years in the hole, Warden. Guess who the judge is? <laughs> me, you! I want to judge this guy, man. <laughs> this is Louie, Warden. It's me, Louie. What this judge needs is a good fire. <laughs> I'm the boy that's going to do it. <laughs> this is the Supreme Court talker now, Warden. <laughs> and I'm one of the judges. <laughs> Detention block. Discipline cases, bad ones. Psychos, parole breakers, four-time losers. All very hard cases. Those are the guys holding those men. Two of the worst of them running it. Lions and backs. And we sit here in our hands. I don't need that now, Grimes. Give me post three on the roof. Post three right away. You got your binoculars on 15? All right, well, keep looking. What are they armed with? Can you see? Now, look, you don't fire under any circumstances. You don't fire no matter what. Now, what are they armed with? You sure? Mm-hmm. He says, as far as he can see, they're armed with butcher knives, carpenter tools, and no guns. I told you they didn't have guns. If they had guns, they would have used them. Now, listen to me, Warden. I've worked with these guys for a long time, and I know I'm right. Give them a taste of the hose. Put some tear gas in there. They'll come a-running. They're all yellow. Maybe they'll kill eight men before they come a-running, Grimes. Warden, if uh, somebody was 15, 20 feet away, they wouldn't get hurt, would they? What are you trying to do? Well, they might want to talk to an outsider. All I need is for them to grab a reporter. I'll be careful. They might talk to me, Warden. Of course, if you don't want me to go, I won't. 
But this is a desperate situation. Cover him carefully. that's running this thing. That's me. Who are you? My name's Kaufman. I'm a reporter. I don't touch that guy. Shut up! Well, if you're running this place, let me see you quiet things down. I heard you, smart guy. I know all about that psychology stuff, mister. This is Lyons talking. Quiet, you guys. We got a visitor from the outside. A newspaper guy. He's going to tell the world how he talked to a bunch of crazy, murdering cons. Quiet! 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 Okay, mister, write it up like that. Who cares? You tell him. Tell him we're, we're stir-crazy, we're on the loose, that we're going to kill, kill, kill. Go on, write it. Tell him the Jack Lyons, 15 to 30 for assault and robbery. You talk to him, and he's crazy as a bedbug. He was in the hospital for the criminal insane, and he's playing Napoleon. Napoleon! Okay, you got it? Go write your story. Is that all you have to say? Yeah. What'd you pull this for? You want to know? Yeah. Yeah, I want to know. Hey, Galazzo. Yeah? Tell him. Jim Galazzo, 5 to 15, safe cracking. Out in five on parole. I got a sick sister one mile out of Detroit. I want a visitor. I ask parole. They say no. I go anyway. Back in jail. Parole violator. Frank Johnson. Two years breaking and entering. The guards kept giving to me, so I got mad. I didn't take a swing at them. I took a swing at a locker instead. That makes me psycho, according to somebody. So they put me in a suicide cell. I got TB, but I can't get any treatment. They put me in a punishment block instead of a hospital. I had a job in the parole office. Somebody pays off a guard. He's in my job. I'm out. Hey, Louie, tell them the two-way special. Homemade by the screws. Their own idea. Club a man with one end and whip him with the other. We'll take a picture of it. The state puts a man in here. It's supposed to be for rehabilitation, not punishment. On top of the time the state wants, they punish you more here. I say that's double jeopardy. Triple jeopardy. I'm no dope, mister. The guards, the keepers, they're supposed to be following the law. Oh, that's a laugh. You got enough? For a while. Okay, then. Write it. Tell the warden it's his move. And remember, you got one hour. He's the talk end, I'm the business end. So don't forget, one hour. Nothing happens. You got yourself eight dead boys. You heard him. He's the business department. Who said we've only got an hour? Bax. Oh, so he's laying down the law. You know what he did once? Marquette Prison. The governor was making an inspection tour and he tried to grab him. And he nearly killed one of the guards. So he's issuing ultimatums. That gets us exactly nowhere, Grimes. Now, we've got an hour. The bunch of cons are running this jail. Now, what do you expect us to do? Well, they've got grievances. But I can't, I can't satisfy them. I can't change the whole penal system. Well, they want something. And within an hour. Give me the Detroit Times.
I'd still be an hour. Got a couple of minutes. All right, bring Garvey up here. We either meant business when we pulled this thing off, or we didn't. Garvey's the worst of them anyway. We live too long as it is. I'm getting out of here. All right, he's alive, but he ought to be dead. It's a fake. Going over to them. Gets a little tight, they start going over to them. You see, when it gets a little rough, they start running off. Oh. Anybody else want to check it out? Come on, sir. Get Garvey up here. This is Warden Collins. Warden Collins talking to all the men who've joined this uprising. All the men, cell block 15. They can all hear me. I want to now give my personal word. My personal word that any reasonable grievances within my power to attend to will be attended to. And secondly, there will be no reprisals against any inmate, provided no harm comes to the prison guards. Now I give you my solemn... Let him finish. He's finished. And we're finished, we listen to him. Makes promises. What are these promises? What does that mean? What if we give up the screws? What then? How do we know he keeps his word, huh? Huh? What have we got to know that hold him to his promise? He's right. You bet I'm right. You know, to them, we're animals. Animals that got out of the cage, you know, the important thing to them, get them animals back in the cage. And then what? Forget them, let them die, let them rot. All right. We're animals? I'll prove to them we're animals. I'll prove it. <laughs> Give him Garvey dead, we cut off his head and roll it across the yard. No! What do you mean, no? We do that, we're finished, now cut us down. Garvey's only one, there's seven more. They'll go after us with the machine guns, they won't stop at anything because if we kill one, then they know we'll kill the rest of them too. And they won't care, so we got nothing to stop them with. Garvey, I want you to get down on your knees right now and start crawling. All the way from right here to the warden's office, on your knees. And don't turn your head or you'll get a shiver in your back. And don't get up, you understand? Please, please don't kill me, don't kill me! See him, they'll know we're in business. You're gonna take him out. Frog his head across the yard. Oh, that's all you know. I want some changes around here. Garvey, get down on your knees. Break down. Okay. We'll let the boys decide what we're gonna do. Either chicken out, or we're gonna show them who's running things around here. It's me, Garvey. Help. Warden, help. It's me, Garvey. Come on. <laughs> I gotta call my wife. Ed, some, somebody is calling her. Now, you, you're all right. I want you to relax. We'll cut off his head and roll it across the yard. Cut off his head and roll it across the yard, and they were cursing. Who? Bags. Cut off his head. They were, they were laughing. He was beating me, hitting me. I, I, just 
a minute. Bats was going to kill you? They were going crazy. Now tell it to me straight. And Lyons, Lyons jumps in and he says, he says, let him out. Let him out to tell him we mean business. <laughs> Lyons saved Garvey. He saved his life. It means they're weakening. Or something else. Maybe they want a deal. Yeah. The governor's standing by on an open line. Governor, I'd like to know how far I can go in making a deal. I believe there's one man, Lyons, who has sufficient control at the moment, and I said at the moment, to make a deal. Yes, sir. Cell block 15. It's one Collins. Come in, Lyons. Okay, Warden. Make it good. Lyons, if you want a deal, I'm authorized by the governor to tell you that he promises to act on all reasonable grievances. And that there will be no reprisals. Now, you talk to your men. I don't have to talk to them. It's no good. You've got the governor's word. You expect me to go to my bed with promises? This is Pax. Don't double talk us, Warden. You kill one of those guards and it'll be a bloodbath. All right. Pax, Lyons, come in. Come in, South Lock 15. Switched off. Look, Warden, I work out of the Capitol in Lansing, and I know politicians. Lyons has got to look good in front of these men. They're not buying any promises. He's on top now, but he's shaky. Maybe he can't deal. Maybe nobody can deal for that mob. Let me talk to Lyons again. Well, what do we got to lose? Go ahead. Okay, reporter. What is it? What do you want? What do you want? That's the question. We want to be treated like men. You understand? Like men! The governor will deal. That's what he says. Okay. What do you want him to do now? You're holding seven men. The governor is willing to deal for those seven men. Now, he's made his move. It's up to you to make yours. What are your terms? We want to change. That's our terms. The screws, the parole system, the suicide cell. We want some air in these buildings. The works. Those are just words. Those aren't terms. You want a deal? Deal. You got to figure it out practically and put it down on paper. Otherwise, you don't want a deal any more than he does. We want a deal. Then say it. Exactly what you mean. Otherwise, it's going to end only one way. All the gods dead, and you guys finished. Oh, no. Not us finished. Not us. Okay. We'll write it then. Hey, Galazzo, can you play the typewriter? Okay. Demand one. Eliminate inhuman restraint equipment. Vicious hand weapons. All right, demand two. Procedure to be revised so that the inmates, get that? So that the inmates have representation on the prison's segregation board. All right, get him in here. This is 
is it. It's all there. Okay, it's signed. Now what? PA's on. Tell the men it's a contract. Tell them you're releasing the guards. This is Jack Lyons, talking to the men all over this prison. I have a contract in my hand. The governor of this state has signed to 11 demands, including one demand that there is no punishment to us for going out. Now, there are some who think we can't deal fair and square like on the outside. Well, we didn't kill any of those guards. And we got the signature of the governor. I, for one, will accept that. And I say, you accept that. Now, we've wanted everybody to know how stinking and rotten conditions are in here, and we've done that. Not only for us in this hellhole, but for all guys in other prisons. So I say, lay down your weapons and go quietly back to your cells. Something more than the end of a prison riot occurred that April. Through Lyons, the prisoners had dealt in good faith with the people of the state of Michigan. And through their governor, the people had dealt in good faith with the prisoners. As promised, there were no reprisals taken by the state. Instead, a sweeping investigation into Michigan prisons was undertaken. And not the least among those who helped avert the potentially tragic outcome was Al Kaufman, a reporter for the Detroit Times. A great prison uprising ended in a victory for common sense and humanity. It happened on deadline.